I'm John Dilley with Tooele TV. I'm here with Barbara Barlow of Spears Farms. Barbara, tell us a little bit about the farm. This farm uh, was George Spears' farm. This log cabin was built in 1863. Uh, the farm is a sesquicentennial project. We had this property rented and everyone threw their garbage in the field. And so uh, I said to my husband, I think we need to do a sesquicentennial park here and clean this up and make it something beautiful. And so that was what precipitated the construction of this farm. Great, great. And uh, was this log cabin on site at the time, I'm assuming, from all the way from when? 1863, this log cabin was built by George Spears and his two older boys. Uh, all of the school property were, was part of the farm originally. And I remember when my mother sold that property to the school district. Great, great. And uh, so you've been involved in this all your life? Yes. I, I li w lived here, my mother lived here, and her mother lived here. Uh, so now this log cabin has been turned into a museum? Yes. Three years after we uh, did the sesquicentennial park, we decided to bear the walls of this log cabin. I went to Snow College and took the log cabin restoration class down there so that I would know what needed to be done. And then I come home and my husband uh, was not in good physical condition, but he helped me to tear the lath and plaster off of these log cabin walls. And then uh, I proceeded to rechink and take care of the walls and restore this log cabin. Took three and a half years for us to get it finished and opened as a museum. That's, that's great. It's a lot of work and a lot of love and care put into this. Uh, what kind of things could we see at this museum? Uh, <clears throat> we have the pictorial history of George Spears on the wall over here and his family. Uh, we have some artifacts in these bookcases, uh, history. Uh, when I have people come to the museum, I tell them about how the logs were brought down out of the canyon uh, the whitewash that's on the logs and the purpose of whitewash back at that time. Uh, tell us about the, the grounds and all the vegetation and the history of how that all came about. Well, <clears throat> when George moved here, of course, he did farming. And he used a backpack and took his farm produce out to Stockton. And... Uh, Years later, he turned the farm over to my grandmother and her husband, who was Ellen and William Stewart. And he moved up onto Main Street. And so when he was here on the farm, he planted asparagus seed on his knees, which was brought by his brother-in-law, Bill Staines, uh, who built the Devereaux House in Salt Lake. He had been on a mission to Russia and brought that asparagus seed home with him. When I was a child, there was a field of asparagus, which we sold to everyone in town. We also had rhubarb or pie plant that still exists here, and there are a few spots of the uh, asparagus seed that are still here. There are the original grapevines that are still here. Asparagus, so that means you have spear spears. Right. <laughs> and then I understand that after, after you came in and did the restoration project, got rid of the garbage, there was some plants that were donated from the community? Yes, there was. Uh, when I did this project, I had a dream after we had talked about it, and I saw actually a, a vision of what this was to look like. I was not a farmer nor a gardener. And uh, so I pursued that uh, dream that I had in the layout, and uh, then I joined Master Gardeners in order to be able to take care of this place because I really didn't know what I was doing, but I went ahead and planted as I saw in the dream and, of course, bought everything that I could buy uh, 
at the end of the year. Uh, this dedication for the sesquicentennial was uh, on August 31st, 1997. And uh, my granddaughter and I were out picking raspberries uh, on the 24th of July, and I said to her, we need to go to Salt Lake to see the 24th of July parade, go to ZCMI because they're having half price on their lawn furniture starting at noon, and then we need to go over for the conference center groundbreaking, and I need to speak to Elder Lauren Dunn about dedicating this park in August. And so we hurriedly changed our clothes and went to Salt Lake and took care of all that business that day. That's a good day. <laughs> it was a very successful day. And uh, so I have continued to take Master Gardener classes ever since then. I go every year, and uh, I'm learning. And I learned, however, that I planted many things in the wrong place. Uh, but they're all, they've all grown, and they're beautiful, and it's really a work of love. That's great. And the, the time you've put in has, has shown. It, it really has paid off. It's beautiful outside. Uh, I understand that you host uh, receptions and gatherings around at, uh, on the farm. Is that correct? Yes, I do. I, uh, many people use the farm. The DUP group uses it monthly. I have different groups come all the time, class reunions, family reunions, and wedding receptions. All right. And uh, are, those, do, are people allowed to come and take a look at the farm free of charge, or how does that work? Yes, they are. Anyone is welcome to come at any time and walk around and enjoy this beautiful place. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, and what kind of are you? What uh, are the museum hours? Uh, the museum is open by appointment, and uh, my phone number is available for that appointment. And uh, the grounds is open twenty-four-seven. I'm John Dilly with TwillaTV.com.